They told me insulin was my only tool, but no one mentioned this. See, one day I ran out of insulin, not on purpose, but what happened next changed the way that I managed my blood sugar forever. See, one day I was shopping at Costco with my wife when suddenly I heard the alarm on my pump empty, no insulin left. See, instantly panic set in. I didn't realize this. My first thought, this could get dangerous, right? I checked my Dexcom, blood sugar was in the low 100. So I thought, okay, got some time. But then I noticed something strange. As I kept walking around Costco, my blood sugars weren't rising. They were staying stable. And that's when it hit me. It was like I had accidentally set my basal to 0% and my walking was just burning off just enough glucose to keep everything balanced, at least for now. See more on that at the end, because there is a risk that could leave you in the hospital or worse if missed. That was the day that I realized insulin isn't my only tool. There are dozens of other ways to manage blood sugar. And today I'm going to show you exactly how it works, what risks to avoid, of course, and how you can build your own formula for blood sugar control. See, in this episode, I want to show you the emergency moment that ultimately gave me this epiphany, but also why I no longer panic when I spike because I've got new options that you may not have heard of, as well as the ultimate strategy that I use to naturally bring down blood sugars as a type one diabetic. If you don't know me, I'm Matt Van De Vecht. I've lived with type one diabetes for over 15 years now. I'm also an Ironman athlete, certified master fitness trainer, nutritionist, best-selling author, but arguably the most important, a type one diabetic warrior just like you. And what I'm about to share with you, this isn't a cure, right? But it is what gave me back control, peace, and ultimately options, right? So let's break it down. Your muscles are like glucose sponges. And when you move, even something as simple as walking through Costco, you activate GLUT4 transporters. Now, I want you to think of GLUT4 transporters, or just GLUT4, we'll call them, as doors on your muscle cells. So insulin normally opens those doors, but exercise, exercise has its own key. And that means your body can pull sugar out of your blood without needing additional insulin. It's pretty cool, right? So this is why even 10 minutes of walking after meals can lower blood sugars by 20 to 30%. In fact, Comment muscle right now if you want a deep dive on the one muscle that does this better than any other, and I'll make a video on it if there's enough comments. It is truly fascinating and unexpected. But ultimately, though, it's why strength training increases insulin sensitivity as a base. So if you do strength training, you might see an improvement in insulin sensitivity for up to 72 hours while your muscles continually soak up that glucose in an effort to replace the muscle glycogen that was burned from that workout. And it's why movement is one of the most powerful levers we have, even when insulin isn't available. That's pretty cool, right? But have you ever noticed your blood sugars drop during a walk? In fact, comment how many points the biggest drop was below if that's you. I've seen it go from 300 down to low. <laughs> it was not fun, but I'd love to know your experience as well. Now, here's the truth. Insulin is just one dial on a massive mixing board. There are over 50 variables that impact blood sugars up or down. So let's just name a few and get these out of the way, right? Sleep, just one bad night can raise insulin resistance by 20 to 30%. Stress, cortisol and adrenaline, your counter-regulatory hormones can spike you even if you didn't eat a thing. Hydration, so dehydration or not drinking enough water makes your blood Thicker, literally changes the viscosity of your blood, makes it harder for insulin to circulate, sugars climb faster. Temperature, hot weather can drive sugars down, can push them up, cold can push them up, bring them down, it's different person to person. I went for a five mile run today when it was very hot, very humid, my blood sugars crashed a lot faster. Stayed in range between 83 and 110 the whole time, but I did require more glucose. These are things you have to have in mind. You've got illness, hormones, timing of exercise, food type, not just the carbs, but the fats, the proteins, the fibers, even altitude. There are so many different variables that impact blood sugars. And I know some of you are hearing this and getting a little bit nervous, getting fearful, getting frustrated that we have to deal with this. And you're right to think this is absurd. Why do I have to be in, in control of all these things or even aware of all these things? But I want you to understand that it's actually a good thing it's actually a positive. Because see, now that we know 
there are 50 plus reasons that blood sugars go up and down. It gives us hope for actual control and not just a best guess. See, the more of these dials you know, the more you can predict, adjust, and control your outcomes. And here's the best part. Once you see the full board, you stop panicking because you know it's not random. Every blood sugar exists for a reason. Like I mentioned in my number one bestseller book, The Blood Sugar Freedom Formula, I go deep into a lot of these reasons and how to map it out, how to build your own blood sugar formula for predictable blood sugars. And that's what I'm after is certainty behind type 1 diabetes. See, blood sugars aren't random. I know that's not a popular thought, but they're formula driven, right? Which means that, yes, you have to take responsibility for them. But when you do, you've got actual control. There's hope to adapt and adjust and manipulate blood sugars. And the sooner you learn your personal formula, the sooner you take back control. But let's talk about the danger zone for a second here. Going without insulin too long carries a serious risk. And I want you to hear this clearly. You can develop ketones and even go into diabetic ketoacidosis or DKA without your blood sugars looking high. It's called euglycemic DKA, and it's ultimately an imbalance of not enough insulin in your system. Okay, it's, it's not that you don't have insulin, it's just not enough. Your body has to shift metabolically. And when there's not enough insulin in your system, that leads to the body freaking out, even if blood sugars look controlled on the surface level. You might be sitting in the 90s or low 100s like I was, but if you've had your insulin pump turned off for too long or skip a long-acting dose if you're on MDI, this is the risk you run. One of the calculations that's assumed to be true across an average is two hours in the absence of insulin is when this shift can happen, but it can be different for you, so keep an eye out. Now, here's how it happens. Someone goes for a long run. They think, I'll just turn my pump off. I don't wanna go low, right? Two hours later, their blood sugars look perfect, but their body, without basal insulin, is producing ketones in the background. By the time symptoms hit, it can be harder to catch and more dangerous. So yes, short-term gaps like my Costco story, 30 minutes without insulin, can sometimes balance out. But if insulin stays off for too long, ketones are coming, and that's not optional. This is why knowledge is power, right? From the surface level, blood sugars look good. You think you've won. But under the surface, you could be setting yourself up for a hospital stay or worse, and it can get scary fast. I've talked to people who've dealt with this, where they're in DKA, in the 80s and 90s, and they can't figure out why. They end up in the hospital. Hospital has to take them out of this emergency situation, and it does get scary. And this, again, is why knowledge is power, because the same lever that helps you stay in range during a short walk could put you at risk during a marathon or a trip to Disney while walking all day or gardening for too long, right? Anything that is continuous and might lead to a lower blood sugar where you might think that turning your pump off is the answer. Now, let's bring it all together, right? With the help of that Costco experience to solidify my theories, I developed my framework called balancing arrows. So here's how it works. Every variable is an arrow that we can connect to blood sugar outcomes. So walking, arrow down, meaning I'll see a drop in blood sugars, right? Turning my insulin pump off would be an arrow up, meaning a spike in blood sugars. Stressful meeting, arrow up. Hot weather and hydration, arrow down which is all different for all of us, right? But when you balance out the arrows, you stabilize your blood sugars. Think about your insulin to carb ratio. You take this much insulin for this many carbs. Insulin would lower blood sugars. Carbs would spike blood sugars. In the presence of a perfect ratio and perfect timing, they stay level. It's not because the insulin to carb ratio is the end all strategy. It's because you've balanced your arrows. Insulin would push you down, but before it does, you introduce carbs which would push it up, but because there's insulin, it levels out. See, this is just a starting point, and this is where it gets exciting because you can balance things out differently, which is why my shirt says, think differently, right? It does, right? Oh, it doesn't. It usually does. I have like five shirts. But today, I went for a run. I took no additional insulin. I kept my basal rates at 100%, and essentially, I was feeding the glucose burn through my exercise. I went for a five-mile run, and ultimately consumed about 80 grams of carbs. Remember my blood sugar stayed between 83 and 110 the entire time. 
That was not an accident. That's a blood sugar formula. I need the other pieces at play, the heat, the humidity, a little tail end of insulin on board from a previous meal, all of that coming together with my run, the specific pace that I go for, and that precision calculation leads me to know this many carbs will get you through without spiking or dropping, and I got to maintain essentially non-diabetic blood sugars while running five miles. That's not something I used to be able to do. The last time, not the last time, many years ago, I tried to run a half of a mile. I had an urgent low, a half mile. Now I'm an Iron Man because I wanted to prove that these blood sugar formulas work, that everything does actually boil down to a calculation, to a blood sugar formula, to balancing your arrows. And when you balance your arrows, you stabilize your blood sugars. More often than not, the balancing point is simply finding an equal and opposite variable. For example, if walking through Costco will drop me, but turning my insulin off, or running out in this case, right, would spike me, then combined, they should, hypothetically, balance out and keep my blood sugars stable. And this is not medical advice, obviously. Make your own choices. Check with your medical team about your best care decisions and strategies. But see, this is the heart of blood sugar control. It's not about perfection. It's about knowing which arrows are in play and adjusting accordingly. So can you burn glucose and lower blood sugars without using insulin? Yes. Can you do it indefinitely? No, I've tried. <laughs> I wanted to see if I could get off insulin. It doesn't work. Plus insulin plays a lot of roles in your body. In addition to the transport of glucose from your bloodstream into storage, it does other stuff too. So you really can't live without insulin. But exercise is one of the most powerful ways to lower blood glucose if you have a stubborn high, if you want to lower it, or if you need to go without insulin for 30 minutes, there are other ways to consider keeping blood sugars in range. Of course, keep yourself safe, avoid DKA, especially you glycemic DKA, and also understand that if you keep insulin steady and go for a run or a walk or gardening, you might need some glucose because you're burning it, right? You got to find that balancing point of equal and opposite. Now, Here's the empowering truth I wanna leave you with. Insulin is essential, but it's not your only tool. You have dozens of levers at your disposal. And when you learn how to use them, you stop living in fear of spikes and crashes, which I've been there too, I get it. And you start living with freedom. That's the freedom I found that day in Costco. And it's the freedom I want for you. Now, if this resonated with you, here's what I want you to do next. Drop the word control in the comments, and I'll send you my full training for free on some of these lesser known blood sugar impacts and how to manipulate blood sugars with them. That's where it gets fun. It puts you in control of your blood sugars instead of the guessing game. And if you do want to go deeper, if you want to map out your personal blood sugar formula customized to your lifestyle, that's what I do with clients in private coaching. A lot of them start with my bestseller book right over there, the Blood Sugar Freedom Formula. Action takers often want private coaching on top of it. Either way, happy to help if I can. Links in the description for you to check that out. Now, ultimately, I share all of this because thriving with type 1 diabetes isn't about fear. It's about options. It's about resilience. And it's about living your best life, no matter what. I hope you enjoyed this one and keep up the fight.